Street art intertwines our daily lives with art. We can always see street art either on our way to school or simply by walking down the street. It's taking an abandoned alleyway and turning it into a masterpiece. It abandons the distinction between everyday lives and art that you find in museums and exhibitions. Street art is a freedom of expression, creativity, and imagination. In Egypt, the boundaries of street art was pushed by using it to remind the public of a past revolution. The street art is based off of the revolution in 2011 where activists demanded to overthrow President Hoji Mubarak because of their poverty, unemployment, and the corruption in the government. As a result, they burned down the city of Cairo. Seven years later, the public is still reminded of the rebellion through Mohammed Mamun Street. Mohammed Mamun Street is part of the destroyed city, Cairo, and is covered in vibrant paints and colors that make up many significant murals representing scenes from the revolution. These works of art are major, major political movements. Street art and graffiti became a means of communication for the people. They expressed their individual opinions on anything. It didn't apply to only political justice. Its use stretched onto other parts of a human life, like romance or occupations. Police and government officials ruined and covered many murals that they thought were inappropriate for them to maintain in their power. The street artists' freedoms were squished against the strong presence of the government, who tried to silence them. To this day, the street artists are still rebelling for their artworks, and they still continue to display whatever they wish, despite the government's strict laws. Ganzir took part in the revolution by rebelling in his own street art, and he quickly became one of the revolution's public faces. He contributed his own murals to the burned down Tahrir Square. Most of them were portraits of men and women who died during the 2011 rebellion. Ganzir's works tested political beliefs and contribute to exposing the injustice in the world. His name quickly received international fame, and soon after, Ganzir moved to the United States and began to create murals that targeted American political and social problems. The revolution made Ganzir realize that he wished to dedicate his artistic talent to create change. Not just fleeting change, but change that would go down in history. This mural titled Biker vs. Tank is one of Ganzir's many murals around the, de the destruction in Cairo. The mural was also part of many protests occurring since 2011. Ganzir truly stretched the limit with this piece of art. There's a military tank painted on the left of the wall and on the right is a biker boy. Both subjects have contour lines that are painted in only black and white. However, their mass significantly differs. The tank's greater size makes it look like it has way more power than the biker who is quite tiny in comparison. This makes the tank look appear, appear to be in power over the biker. The tank represents the military and the government in the supposed war between the government and the people, with the biker boy representing the citizens. In addition, the mural shows the unnecessary lengths that the government had went to in order to stop the protesters during the revolution. There is a large military tank in the mural that the viewers assume was sent to simply target a boy riding his bike. In the later years, other street artists added on their own paintings to Gandhi's piece. They added subjects like people getting run over by the tank to represent the military's cruelty over the citizens and other things like an innocent panda behind the biker to stress on more innocence to the people. Eventually, the mural was covered by the government because it was a supposed threat, but of course everything but the tank was covered. This didn't stop the artists from continuing to add onto the mural. They covered the government's tracks with even more rebellious paintings. This didn't stop Kenzir either. His path did not end with the government, it only began from there. This is another artwork from Ganzir titled Of Course Blue Ball Lady, created in August 2014. A woman is shown with a scarred and beaten up face wearing a vibrant blue bra. The blue bra was taken from a riot in late 2011 that took place in Egypt where a woman was being heavily beaten by the military soldiers. Her shirt was torn revealing her blue bra. She was later killed and her bright blue bra became a symbol of rebellion against the military dictatorship. The addition of the blue bra provided a sense of resistance against the military in his peace. In addition, the use of something as intimate as undergarments made the situation go past the matter of politics and into, into personal lives, showing that this movement wasn't just for rights, and it was for each individual to live their lives freely without any strict restraints. The only color seen on the canvas is blue, which brings out the symbolic undergarment even more. 
The Arabic text that is painted across the canvas is translated into saying, of course the, the army protected the revolution. This statement is sar sarcastic as it contradicts the woman's speech in Epin's solemn face. Their sarcasm brings out the lack of proper respect and leadership that the military shows. This piece is meant to stir protesters into action against the government and to seek balance between the citizens and the military. Street art in Egypt turned from hieroglyphics that represent religion and stories to an open canvas for expressing anything and everything. It was also a key part in Egypt's 2011 revolution. Yanzir was one of the key components of street art's change. In addition, his pieces pushed people to act upon injustice. His pieces of, of art provides an abundance of meaning for the public to absorb and analyze. Ganzir's works continue to drive change not only in Egypt, but everywhere around the world. 